Hi, and a very warm welcome to our quickish tip. This might be a little bit of a longer one, as I will talk about the new photon tracing in the Octane 2022 Experimental Build 1. This might not have the same features as the later released final one, but if you like caustics, then this is probably something for you. So let's get started with our own scene. So first of all, I want to make a plane for our caustics to form on. And then I want to make a cube. And this cube will be our class plane. So what I want to do is make it 2.5 by 40 by 40. So this is a class plane. The light will shine through and create caustics. Let's move it back a little. Then I will duplicate that plane and move it forward a little. And this will be a mirror later on to mirror our caustics. Here we go, something like that. Now, speaking about light, let's create some light source. And with light sources and shadows, it's the same as with caustics. So big light sources produce soft shadows and soft caustics and small light sources produce sharp shadows and sharp caustics. So what I want to do is make this light source sharper by making it smaller. And then I like to do a small rig by putting the light source in a null, not the other way around. And then move the light source back maybe 300 units and then turn the null object and as I turn the null object, the light source is moving with it. So let's actually put it on the other side and maybe move it up by 20 degrees. And what I also want to do is move up the whole null object a little bit. So the intersection angle of our glass plane and the light is aligned. What I also like to do, and let's start rendering for a second here so we can see what we are doing, is to turn off the environment. And I really would like to have an option to have that permanently black. It is distracting because every time I make a new scene, I have to turn that down to black if I don't use an HDRI or anything. Now the next thing you will notice is that the light is a bit dark. So what we could do is either turn up the power or tick off our surface brightness and I will do that. And this will make our light actually much too bright. So I will turn down the power anyway to maybe five or let's say, let's make it 20, 20 looks nice. The last thing I want to do to our light source is to make it a spotlight. So I will go into our lights node tree here. And by hitting tab, I can search for distribution. And there's the spotlight distribution node. I don't know why the spotlight distribution has a preview. I always turn it off. And we will connect that to the distribution. And then you can use the cone angle and hardness to make the shape of the light appear like you want. So let's make it about 30 degrees here. Okay. Last step for our scene is to create the materials. So first of all, let's create the glass material here and call it glass. And then go into the glass material and adjust some settings. First of all, I want to adjust the IOR or the index to 1.5 because otherwise you have a water material, not a glass material. And then I want to adjust the transmission to one. Otherwise, every time the light is penetrating one of the glass walls, 10% of the energy will be lost. And this is not really realistic. Then we also want to make our mirror material. Therefore, I create for simplistic reasons, I only create a metal material, call that metal. And now we have to assign the materials to our respective objects. Not a lot is happening right now. This is because we are still on our direct lighting kernel. For the fun of it, let's just set it to the old path tracing kernel, which is still relevant 
So if you're not dealing with a lot of caustics, the path tracing is still the way to go. You can see that the path tracing now is really struggling with the caustics, and this is because the small light source. So the bigger the light source would be, the faster the caustics will render. So as we've seen that, let's actually switch to our photon tracing. And what the hell is going on? It looks like just path tracing. And this is exactly right. The photon tracer is just a thing that is built on top of the path tracing engine. So everything else in your scene that is not caustics and photons will be still relying on the old path tracing engine. But how do I get the photons to actually show up? So for the keen eye of you that might have seen before, inside of the index there's this allow caustics. And as soon as I click that, our scene becomes rendered with the photon caustics. Now there's two things happening here. There's still path traced caustics on this portion here. And if you have watched it really closely, the caustics here seem a bit smooth. So let's tackle one problem at a time. For the path traced caustics here, they are coming from our metal plate here, that's uh, being a mirror. Now, once the light rays have passed through the glass, they become photon caustics. And photon caustics stay photon caustics for the rest of their lives. So the rays that have passed through the glass and are reflected by the mirror are still photon caustics. But the rays that are not passed through the glass and then hit the mirror, they will be normal caustics. So the solution here would be to just go into the metal material and also allow for caustics. Now there's a refresh issue and I have to reload the scene. But once I've done that, we have solved one of the problems and all the caustics are now photon traced. The other thing that is important is the, and this is a small bug that I encountered somehow, so don't bother that the caustics somehow get darker sometimes. Uh, this is a uh, bug in the current build. So we will concentrate on what I want to show you, and this is the splotchiness or the smoothness of the caustics. So when I direct your attention to the kernel settings that has to do with the caustics, there's a photon gathering radius. And essentially what this is doing is saying how big each caustic, how big each photon should be interpreted. So if I make this a lot smaller, you end up with noisy caustics again. They still clear up faster than the path raised ones, dependent on the light source. But the rule of thumb here is to make this photon gathering radius as big as possible without sacrificing too much of your caustics detail. So if I make it too big, you can see there's not a lot of detail left in here and I make it too small, it becomes noisy. So the perfect way to go about this is to find a size that is fitting for your scene. Because this is real world size, and if your scene is smaller, you need another value than if your scene is bigger. Let's go through the technical values here real quick. So on top you have the photon depth, this is your ray depth, so the larger that is, it's uh, the same as with the ray depths up here. The larger it is, the more travel depth your rays have in the photon space. Then you have the count multiplier, and this is basically a balance between the path tracing and the photon tracing. So if you have the feeling your photons are not resolving fast enough, you can up the count so there's more emphasis on the photon tracing and less emphasis on the path tracing. And the other way around, if your path tracing is very slow compared to your photon tracing, you can move that down. And then you have more emphasis on the path tracing than on the photons. The lower two values here I almost never touch. So I'm not bothering explaining them 
because there's so much cool stuff here to explore in the scene. So let's make some cool stuff here. So in our scene, let's go into inside our glass material and add an image texture. And let's actually add a normal map here. So we might want we might want to add this leather material because it sort of looks like an ocean water or something. And of course, want to connect it to the normal port. And if you look closely, this is giving our glass a frosted look because the normals are so strong. So there's two things I want to do. One thing is to transform it to become bigger. So let's make it five by five. And the other thing is to make the power less. So you can now hopefully see that we generated some sort of caustics pattern through our material here. And the cool thing is that bump mapping and normal mapping all are working. Let's make this even larger so we can see the pattern a little bit better. And what I want to do now is another cool thing that came up with the latest of the experimental builds. And this is that it works within volumes. So let's create a volume. And what I want to do right here is a couple of settings inside of the medium. So first of all, the step length, depending on your scene, might be much too large. So let's set it to a smaller value. This makes the volume really dense. So let's also compensate for that with a lesser density. And I have to figure out what might look good. And you might already be able to see that, that the caustics that we had on a floor now are visible inside of the volume. A uh, word of caution here is that within the volume, the caustics tend to need a larger radius. So if I put in a smaller radius, you kind of get this small noise pattern forming here. And this is a sign that your gather radius of the photons is too small for the volume. So you have to find uh compromise that works for the best detail as well as for good caustics so now let's just jump in here real quick again and make the density a little bit less still and then maybe make the light source a bit stronger so let's go to the light source and make it maybe 40 and then go in here and make this maybe 10. So we only shooting our rays through the glass. And you can see you can have a lot of fun with that. So you can have moving textures inside of the glass forming different rays. So we have an ocean surface or something like that. Uh, so last but not least, what I want to do is go inside of the glass into the dispersion and put up the dispersion to a rather high. This is like a very unnatural high dispersion value. And you can see that the calculation gets slower, but you still have like this rays are forming and there's like a bit of color in here it's not too much but um, if you're doing that right if you have a prism or something like that you should get quite interesting results of course also everything um, depends on what the map you're using here inside of the normals is doing so if i exchange this map for maybe like this pattern here there might be a different pattern forming where you can see the dispersion a little bit better. Okay, so this, as I said, was a quickish tip as it wasn't really very quick. 
but it shows you some kind of ways to go about with a photon tracer. Last bit of advice here, you can use those volume um, caustics also inside of subsurface scattered materials. But if you move your camera within the subsurface scattered material, it doesn't work anymore. With the octane volume that's based on VDBs, you can also move your camera within the VDB and it's still working. So the SSS based volume has the advantage that it's not uh, voxel based but it's like uh, has an infinite amount of detail within so you can get a more detailed race if you want to call it like that uh, while as the volume when you have a vdb based volume or this octane volume where you can generate the volume you can have the camera inside which is also very cool so you have to pick your poison, so to speak. And of course, with the mirror, you can also mirror your caustics where you want. So right now it's going up outside of the volume. Okay, so hope you had fun watching this. Hope you have fun creating with it. I predict the internet being full of caustics renders in the next year. So wish you happy rendering and a good one. Bye.